party people! Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I'm your host as always, Jeff Storm. This week I am joined once again by Nathan Paletta to play through our game of Imp of the Perverse, a role-playing game of Jacksonian horror in which players, investigators haunted by the imp on their shoulder, the murderous urges whispering in their ear, go to war with monsters, those from beyond the shroud, beyond the veil that separates our world from the next, who have given in to those imps and become something other than human. These investigators and monsters go to war, and by defeating these monsters is the only way that these heroes can become human again. It is a great, creepy, weird game that I super love. You can find a link to the pre-orders in the show notes. Just a side note, this is the gameplay portion of this two-part episode. You heard character creation in our previous episode. If you'd like to hear that and haven't listened to that episode, you should go back and listen. You'll hear both character creation and monster creation, or you can just jump into this episode with no context. Either way will work fine, but we referenced the fact that we had previously recorded a few times, so I wanted you to understand what was going on. Two quick things for this episode. One, a quick content warning that there's some medical horror elements throughout the episode. Uh, just be aware of that before we uh, you listen. And two, a uh, quick note to our listeners that a uh, reminder that I will be doing a live show, Party of One Live, July 20th, 5.30 p.m. at Tattooed Moms, my favorite bar in my favorite city in the world, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's going to be a great time. I can't wait. It's going to be an absolute blast, and I hope to see you there. With all that said, let's throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I'm sitting down once again with my good friend, Nathan Paletta. Nathan, thank you so much for coming back on Party of One. Well, we have to finish this out, so you had me uh, you had me hooked from the first episode. I did. I did, because we recorded it two nights ago, and now, now, we, now we finish what we started, right. because that is the Party of One way. <laughs> I am so, also pleased to be, of course. Thank you. Uh, I am pleased to have you here. So, speaking of what we are finishing today, the thing that we have started, why don't you give us, uh, give the listeners at home the pitch for the game that we are playing this week? All right. Uh, tonight, or this afternoon, whenever you are listening to this, uh, we will be playing Imp of the Perverse, which is a psychological horror game of monster hunting in Jacksonian Gothic America. So uh, the premise of this game is that there is a shroud between the world of the living and the world of the dead. From across this shroud come imps attracted to the perversity that uh, overwhelms certain certain people. Uh, you play one such uh, protagonist um, and the fact that you your perversity is so intense that it has drawn an imp to you means that you are also attuned to the anxiety caused in the world when someone who has fully given in to their perversity, fully embraced the imp, as we say, uh, and turned into a literal monster in the world, uh, is present. So you are uh, drawn to that disturbance, if you will, and um, only by hunting down said monster can you potentially rid yourself of your own imp? Great, great pitch. I, I, I've been thinking about this game for at least the last two days, if not longer, and I'm very, <laughs> very excited. So, uh, this week I am playing Arnold Thurston Holbrook. Arnold is a writer. He is a journalist in the city of Philadelphia, in Jacksonian Philadelphia. Uh, specifically, Arnold's uh, purview within the, the newspaper is the obituary section. Arnold is the interviewer of those that are no longer around to be interviewed. <laughs> um, he is uh, from a proud family. His family were German immigrants. They've come in. They have a small shop on a small corner. They are butchers. Uh, and they, they the, his family's viewpoint, the Holbrook family sort of credo was... You know, we came over and we made something small happen for us. Now we want you, the next generation of Holbrook children, there are about seven of us. <laughs> um, we want you to go do at least as well as we did in whatever form that takes. For Arnold, that was the obituary section. Morbid work, but <laughs> I'm pretty comfortable. You know, it's a living. Right. It's a job. Uh, Arnold lives in Philadelphia with his longtime uh, partner, lover, uh, Brian Moorweather. They are unmarried, but in a long-term relationship together. And uh, that's about it. Actually, no, there is the one thing of the, the imp that haunts me at all times. <laughs> right. I guess I should I talk mean, about. You have an interesting character regardless. However, <laughs> there's also this other aspect, which is 
Uh, I've developed the ability to... I've always been pretty good at sussing out when people were bullshitting me. And that has sort of turned into a... Uh, the ability to smell a lie. I can, I, I physically kind of convulse a little bit and mm. it, it has that sort of sulfuric rotten egg smell when someone is, is feeding me a line or trying to hide something or is covering something up. And the problem is you'd think that that smell would be repulsive, <laughs> but it's really, really nice sometimes. And so, you know, you get that first whiff of it and it's repulsive and you, you kind of recoil, but then you start to think about it, and you're like, oh, but I really, really, really want to smell it again, so... It's a bit of... To, uh, it's a bit of an acquired taste. A bit of an acquired taste, and once you get that first sampling, I tend to want to just... Not necessarily, like, uh, give them a gotcha, but twist it a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Make them squirm, get a little more of that scent in the air, make them twist the knife a little bit, and, and having that sort of power over people is troubling <laughs> and how good it feels mm -hmm. sure is uh on the other hand you also have a greatest strength a most human quality mm -hmm. uh i am very i am relatable i am very good at commiserating with people you know like i said that my job my calling the thing that i am best at in this world is weird. And I spend a lot of time around the dead. You know, I've seen more than my share of corpses and murder victims, natural causes, horrible diseases. But, you know, it's a job and I'm earning a paycheck. I'm making my parents proud. I'm making a living. And I kind of feel like if I can make a living walking among the dead and telling their stories, then mm -hmm. what's to say everybody out there is not making their own living? You know, a job might seem weird to me but you've probably got your own gripes and your own real pride in your work as well so i i'm very good at kind of relating to people and connecting with them on that very sort of like co-worker kind of relatability mm -hmm. sense awesome it's very kind of a uh, working class camaraderie yeah kind of uh yeah that's great uh i am very excited to see what happens i'm very excited um so part of uh, so part of what I did um, between our sessions, well, one the, the main thing was I created a monster and mm -hmm. fun. Uh, perhaps this will be fun for people because if everything goes according to plan, they will have heard uh, yes, what you're going to be getting yourself into. But you, you are going in um, blind, as it were. Uh, yeah, I have I have no idea what is coming. The listeners have heard in our previous episode both the <laughs> creation of Arnold and the creation of this monster. So there's going to be a little bit of dramatic. There's going to be a little bit of don't go down that hallway that <laughs> I am living for. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, to be clear, this is the state that you should be in at the beginning mm -hmm. of each chapter. The uh, players, unless they have uh, been playing multiple sessions and someone has given into their imp and turned into a monster which is one end state for a character, um, they shouldn't know uh, what what is coming. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to go ahead and do two things. One okay. fiction, one, one for the sake of getting us into this, this time and world, and the other uh, for, a, for, for the real life us. Um, and I'll do that second one first, which is, so this is a horror game, mm -hmm. and uh, the nature of how monsters work and also, you know, how, how character perversity works is that, so this is a horror game and that means that, uh, some of the exploration that we're going to be doing and the horror itself is going to come from, um, pushing into material that is, you know, brought up by these aspects of these characters. Mm -hmm. So the game includes, um, safety and content techniques both for character creation and for play. Um, because we're not playing face-to-face, -face, uh, the one that I wanted to bring up here, because we can use it in the audio format, uh, is uh, the Red Mist. Mm -hmm. So uh, at any point, if I'm, you know, going down, going down a, an avenue that you, you know, you don't have a hard out, like, I don't want to go there. Sure. Which I think we'll probably handle by just 
saying it and then editing around if we need yeah, to. Yeah, I think I think I think just I think just give it a hard cut and saying let's let's move around that right. is probably the easiest option. Um, so that would be like a hard line or putting something out of bounds. Um, but if there's something that is like, okay, I don't really need to hear your loving description of uh, bones cracking in the mouth of something, right? Mm -hmm. You can say that uh, a red mist rises and then the person uh, who is narrating uh, steps back a little bit and either plays out the rest of it in like metaphor and imagery as if mm -hmm. seen through billowing mist uh, or and or cuts to the end and just gives us the aftermath. Cool. I uh, like that. Yeah. So that is a, uh, you know, an on on theme. Uh, yeah. Both uh, safety. If something is getting to where, like, I don't want to deal with that, that'll make it unfun for me. And also just content wise, if there's something that uh, you think would be more dramatic, perhaps. If yeah, we did for that, sure. you can. That's a legit use. Uh, uh, and I can use that on you as well. Of course. Um, uh, again, if we were at a table, here's where I would set out my large red anxiety die. Yep. Um, which is tracking the overall level of anxiety in our tail. It starts at one. And um, whenever anxiety rises, I will say so. But cool. uh, that is a, a tell that something that directly impacts on the monster has occurred. Cool. Uh, and sometimes that'll be stuff you do, and sometimes it'll be stuff I bring in. Cool, cool, cool. Love it. Uh, yeah, and then I wanted to transition into talking about your newspaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I decided to to pin down our time frame a little bit and go to uh, Philadelphia 1848. 1848. So a little later in uh, the period. Because I felt like your character, kind of this sense of this uh, optimism, almost, and this fulfillment of the American dream, if you mm -hmm. will, uh, matches pretty well with this, uh, the late period kind of manifest destiny exuberance. That's mm -hmm. kind of sure. the tone of the later period. Uh, in the text, I talk about how I've, for, the, for, the, for this reason, to pin down why you would be in a specific year, I uh, kind of split it up into three eras and they each have their own set of kind of tonally significant um, things going on. Makes sense. Uh, so what this means is for you as a writer for a newspaper, uh, I've decided that you write for uh, the Philadelphia public ledger, um, which was a penny press of the time. Uh, and this means that kind of in the late thirties, early forties, there's this transition, uh, the, Technological changes in printing and uh, how uh, and and how literacy was rising, rising and stuff like that, to the penny press, the one penny newspaper uh, that would come out daily or weekly or whatever, and these were in contrast to the uh, more expensive newspapers that were being published by business interests or political mm -hmm. factions or you know whatever. Um, and one reason that they were so popular is because they're running all these uh, very salacious sure. coverage of things. Um, so I felt like your obituary coverage probably fits right into that lane. Oh, oh, for sure. And I think I think there's definitely an element of like I'm reporting on the gruesome. I'm reporting on like I'm being dispatched to report on the gr like the gruesome stuff. Oh yeah, for w sure. Was was loved by their family and died of natural causes at the at at a, at a ripe old age. Is probably fine for like the back half of the newspaper, but they're, the <laughs> the ones that are paying the bills are the the carriage accidents and the mysterious causes. Oh yeah, for sure. And kind of the more gruesome detail, the better yeah. in terms of what you're actually writing. Yeah. Uh, awesome. And plus, that's just the fun stuff to write. Like you know, <laughs> you gotta you gotta you gotta chase that. You gotta chase your joy at work. Mm-hmm. Chase your dreams. Chase, Chase your, your dreams. dreams. If we had to pick the moral of this podcast, I think it's <laughs> Chase Your Dreams. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to uh, set up for for your character or any questions before we get um, into it? I don't think so. I feel I feel pretty good about everything. I guess the only other thing is is we I, I briefly mentioned my parents. I have a particular relationship with my mother, Bertha mm. Holbrook 
who I go to visit every so often to kind of check in on and make sure that like, cause she's getting on in years to make sure that she doesn't need any help around the shop and she keeps, you know, shooing me away, but I just kind of <laughs> feel like I have to make the effort. All right. So I suppose we will go ahead and start our chapter. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, we are going to start with, uh, you at a fairly, uh, fairly upscale home. Uh, what would be kind of a, not super, super rich, but like more maybe old, old money kind of area Mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. Sure. Um, um, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know the exact kind of area and the homes. I can, I can picture it very clearly. Mm-hmm. Probably not far from like, probably not far from like the Independence Hall area, mm-hmm. like where the sort of very, we're sort of like, you know, where history happened. Right, right. Yeah. This is. Yeah. This is definitely uh, close into the colonial heritage. Yeah. Uh, area. Uh, yeah. I I don't know Philadelphia that well, so feel free to throw out details. I, uh, I will I will I will happily pepper in the details excellent. of the city that I love. You can paint paint the word picture for our listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. So you are outside the home of uh, a a branch, not not the the super famous Adams, as in uh, uh, President Adams. Sure. Um, <laughs> not, uh, not, not, not that home. Not, I don't know if they would have been in Philadelphia, probably not, but a kind of branch of it that is still the Adams, um, greater Adams family. Yeah. As, uh, your newspaper received a tip that there was a, uh, a particularly strange, uh, death of one of the, uh, one of the Adams children. And you have been sent out to uh, make the to, to cover this cover this story. And I, I think that like I, you know, am when I'm on when I'm when I'm sort of reporting, I, I think I am uh, well dressed to say the least. I think mm. that this is when I, you know, generally I think I, I think that like when I'm working, I tend to like let it hang out a little bit, but like <laughs> I am polished up. My hair is perfectly, is perfectly combed. Mm-hmm. I am, I am, I am dapper is right. the word I would use to describe it. As I like, as I go up and I, you know, I knock, I, I, I prepare myself. I have my little notepad and pen. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, so this is, uh, the, this era of, uh, would be you'd have a upturned collar with the points mm-hmm. kind of going, uh, pointing up towards your cheeks. Um, maybe a, you wouldn't have silk probably, but a, a finer linen, like kind of cravat thing at your neck, mm-hmm. uh, and it's tied, uh, or it's kind of a bow tie that's like tied around your collar, but you can see it. Yeah. Your collar's up. Yep. Slick back hair, uh, hat. Yep. Of course. Of course. Um, the door opens, um, the, uh, Opened by a, a, a uh, elderly house servant um, who asks, um, yeah. "May may I help you?" Ah, uh, yes, of course. Uh, I, I'm here to speak to. <sighs> There's never an easy way to say this. I suppose the next of kin. I am uh, from the Philadelphia. I'm I am Arnold Thurston Holbrook from the Philadelphia Public Ledger. Mm-hmm. I am here to speak to whomever the next of kin is. I have some questions about the the dearly departed that we might mm-hmm. report on them. Tell their story to the world. Uh, when you say that you're from the uh, the public ledger, kind of starts closing the door, but before it can swing shut in your face, this is so you work for like a low rent right. paper, right? Yeah, um, not low rent in terms of not popular, but uh, not low class, low class, yeah, low brow, will. low brow, yeah, um, the cheap and easy stuff. Uh, you hear a voice that you recognize from farther uh, in in this hallway call out, um, "Oh, uh, Miss Mister Holbrook, is that you?" And he, uh, yes, it is. Yes, indeed. He opens the door back up. Uh, someone has addressed you, and you see at the end of this hallway um, the brother of your husband. Uh, he has a brother named James, um, and who you have 
who who you have you know met obviously mm -hmm. right of course uh how how do you what is your relationship like with your uh lover's brother i think it is um polite and distant uh in-laws for mm -hmm. lack of a better term like it is the we we don't have a lot in common you know i i am i am for all intents and purposes his brother's weird goth boyfriend <laughs> uh -huh. so like i think that it is definitely a sense of well he's making brian happy but like i don't really want to interact with it sure okay um so uh he uh he has called out to you and uh you know he he recognized you standing in the doorway and he says uh you know oh uh let, let him in let him in i I'd like to actually, uh, actually have a, I would actually like to talk to you, uh, Mr. Holbrook. He always calls you oh. Mr. Holbrook. Uh, thank you. Thank you, James. <laughs> uh, I always call him James. Just to, <laughs> just to again, make him squirm mm -hmm. a little bit. James, thank you so much. I, I, this is an, an absolute, uh, I am at your service. This is a, this is, you know, I, I, I expect no familiar treatment here this is a <laughs> this is a business this is a business call i am a perfect i am a journalist i am here to report so please <laughs> give me the give me the story <laughs> well um he uh he says that uh well i know that you've seen a lot of a lot of strange things in your time and uh i've i was in fact um uh I was in fact tending to poor poor Percival in his illness. Um, you recall that James, uh, he's a physician's assistant. Uh, he aims to become a, a some kind of doctor someday, but he's uh, kind of bounced around different uh, different making a living in different ways. And his most recent thing is that he's decided that he'll take up some kind of doctoring. Of course, All right? Um, so it's like uh, I was attending to to poor Percival. In his illness, and uh, I, I must say, this is a most a, a most unusual passing. Perhaps, what? perhaps you've seen something like it before. I've seen a lot of things, James. I, 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 I truly believe you might be right. You know, uh, you don't you don't work around the dead for as long as I do without <laughs> seeing a thing or two. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, he gets like a horrified look on his face, and then <laughs> kind of. Uh, goes into a polite smile. Um, <laughs> it's like, well, you understand that if it's some kind of contagion, uh, we wouldn't want it to spread. That's, but it's uh, un unlike anything I've seen before. Of course. I mean, of course. And this, this matter will be handled with the, the utmost uh, <laughs> dignity, let me, shall we say. <laughs> he, he gives you a little bit of side eye, but uh, apparently does actually want to get your opinion. I think um, I actually put my like my notebook away just to like give him that sense, give him that extra little sense of you know this is I am treating this with respect and if there's a story I will I will I will fill in the details later. Right. Uh, so he ushers you through uh, a couple like a, a fancy parlor with you know lined with with books and a liquor cabinet with uh, you know exotic liquors, colonial area era furniture that's all massive and and heavy and clearly uh worth worth a lot mm -hmm. um into a uh kind of a withdrawing room that has been the window has been covered with black drapes and uh there's clearly a mirror on the wall that has also been covered uh mm -hmm. and there's a low table that uh in fact is uh that that uh bears a what you in with your practice eye can see is a is is a coffin in front of you and so this is uh you know keep keeping the body in the home for viewing or mm -hmm. for mourning uh for a short period is totally you know normal uh so this is not abnormal is what i'm right. saying but the lid so, is closed so this is the uh this is the the man of the hour so to speak he says uh uh, yes, uh, young young Percival Adams, a a uh, a younger son um, in this house. Uh, he 
was complaining of some of, of tremors and weakness, and uh, and we began treatment um, just last week. And then his uh, they they sent a his 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 mother sent a uh, sent a runner to wake me this morning, and when I came in, this is this is exactly how I saw him, and he uh, opens the lid and pulls the black shroud off of this body and you see uh you know it's a young man you know maybe 20 21 lying arranged uh in state with uh with skin that has been it looks like he's been dropped in a boiling kettle it is bright red is blistered in some places um Hair on his head is all kind of crisped all the way down to his skull. Um, and uh, his uh, kind of the all of the the uh, joints that you can see, he's been you know dressed. Um, but the places where you know skin would be more flexible uh, has all split open um, as if there was some kind of venting some kind of vapor escaping from this body. It is not like anything you have ever seen before. Well, it's uh certainly newsworthy. I'm that was a manner of speaking. <laughs> I can't honestly James, you can wear this feather in your cap. I can honestly say this is new. That is that's perhaps unfortunate news for me, as uh, I uh, I still have no very little to go on in terms of what has happened to this this young man. He was found like this in his bed, no, but nothing. Uh, and it, you know, some I've seen I've seen bodies like this uh, as a result of fire, but there was no scorching or flame marks anywhere in his room. And there were no sounds or disturbances over the, the course of the night. Really? Not a, no sound, no sound, no sound, no flame, and yet all of the heat of the fire. Most peculiar. You mind if I see the bedroom? Uh, he, um, he looks around and, and uh, there, you're alone in this room, but he says, I feel that if you, if you're not able to... If you're not able to add anything to my diagnosis, uh, the the lady of the house would prefer to be um, that w- w- would prefer to to remain un- undisturbed. I'm, of course, I'm of afraid course, I can't let you just roam the house. Of course, of course, of course. Um, this is most peculiar. I I gotta tell you, it's a hell of a story. <laughs> All right, so if you. If, you, if there is a question, if there's something you want to find out, um, we can you can use uh, ratiocination, which mm-hmm. are those three pools that uh, uh, during character creation, uh, I mentioned you have three pools of points, yes. standing, resources, and uh, reason. So if you wish to find something out in the world... Um, you can spend one point from one of those pools. Uh, it is one because anxiety is currently at one. And uh, describe how you go about finding finding it out. And I will give you the answer. Um, you could also, if you wanted to use your edge, uh, this might be a good time to do that. Uh, using an edge is always an exertion roll. Exertion mm-hmm. is where we go to the dice uh, and we perhaps see if your imp is going to come out or not. And we do an exertion roll when you impose your will upon the world, when you use an edge, uh, or when you put someone else in mortal danger or you are in mortal danger. I would like to spend a point of standing. Mm-hmm. I would like to know. I think I. I think my question is, um, what has, what has like as as he was getting sick what had Percival been up to? Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like what, where had he been? What had he been doing? And I think what I, I think what I, what I would like to do is like apologize is like, you know, say to James, like, I understand. I, 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 of course I would never, 
impose, I will... I will write a tasteful report on this and say that he fell... I, I obviously, you know, I have to do my job, but I will, uh, I will keep the gorier details off the page, and I'll poke around and see... If any of his, if any of young Percival's friends or acquaintances have any cute stories that I might pepper in the piece with. And I think I'm going to make a few, like, a few kind of house calls as the, uh, the, the, the obituary writer checking in on, on, on friends and sort of associates to get a picture of what, uh, Percival has been up to in the last few days. Awesome. Um, so we, uh, well... We perhaps we we have a, a brief montage of mm-hmm. uh, you know you knocking on some doors and maybe buying some people some drinks, uh, but at least one door gets slammed in my face. Oh yes, very much. Maybe there's like one of the nicer doors gets slammed in your face, and then mm-hmm. as you go to like cheaper and cheaper looking doors, there's like people will talk to you for longer. Yep. Um, yep. But yeah, you have yeah you have friends, you have connections. This is your city, uh, so you're pretty quickly able to assemble a a. a not particular, not particularly flattering portrait of Percival sure. Adams. Uh, seems like he was a bit of a, uh, a bit, bit of a rake, um, mm-hmm. bit of a, uh, uh, you know, kind of rejecting the status that his family is supposed to have as this, of you know, course. founding pillar of society, uh, but using that to his advantage to like go to the really good parties, right? So specifically, you wanted to find out what was happening before you fell ill. Yeah, what has he? What has he been up to? The night before he, uh, the night before his friends realized that he wasn't coming out, mm-hmm. right? Uh, he had had a an a uh, he had been bragging about having some kind of uh, assignation. Um, with a uh, with someone from uh, the area that you live, mm-hmm. um, I don't know if there would be a particular neighborhood name at this point, um, but uh, you know it describes the the area. Yeah, um, sort of a more 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 townhouses and more sort of the the, the old townhouses and less of the colonial. Right, right. Yeah, your your area. It's like wooden you know they're wooden houses that were originally separate but as time has gone on they've been built together to form yeah yeah, the row houses yeah yeah um anyway he was uh supposed to be uh he 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 was supposed to be heading out on his own uh to meet up with the uh with with as he said a a butcher's daughter um Mm -hmm. in your area all right i think i think i have another i think i have another question and I think I'm going to use a point of reason for this because I think because I think I, I could you I could justify this as standing. But I feel like reason actually kind of works better here as sort of a reason being sort of that pure deductive Sherlock Holmes aha sense. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. think that works. I think that works really well here. If it is a if it is a butcher's daughter, I think reason works really well if I just want to ask who that daughter was, because, you know, I am the I am I am a butcher's son. Right. Like the the butchers, the butchers and the meat packers, they are my they are my people. So I feel like if if in getting one of these descriptions, I probably have a very much an aha moment of like, oh, Mm -hmm. that that neighborhood butcher's daughter, that would be them. Right. Cool. So, yeah, you uh, you're pretty sure that. The only the only butcher's daughter that you can think of off the top of your head. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any are, do you have any sisters that are in? It's not going to be a member of your family, but um, do you have any think, sisters that are in the business with your parents? I don't think so. I think my brother, I think my brother Thomas has largely taken over the butcher shop. And my uh, my sister Ingrid has sort of is uh has like taken maybe taken work elsewhere or like married someone and as is largely like outside of the business. Great. Uh cool. So yeah, the only butcher's daughter that you know of is uh, uh part of a family of kosher butchers. Mm. Um and her name is Frida. Uh Frida Lipkowitz. Frida Lipkowitz. So yeah, I think I I think that the plan here is to go visit go visit Frida and get her picture of events. Mm-hmm. Um, so you go to the, 
Lukowitz house, which you know well. Uh, they are uh, friends of you. Like, the parents are friends with your parents. Yeah. Right. Um, and so Frida is uh, maybe... How did we ever establish how old you are? Uh, I think I'm mid-20s. Okay. So she's she's younger than you. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe a little... Perhaps... Perhaps the, the a little inappropriately young for this, uh, um, you know, for for this higher class right. rake to be coming into the working class neighborhood, right? Like, yeah, one of those situations. So, um, yeah, so you you'd know her by sight, but you've never like spent time with her or anything. Uh, for sure. So you go to the Lipkowitz house where um, you are. So they live, uh, you know, much like your parents, like where they they basically live attached to or uh, the storefront Mm -hmm. that is also their business. Um, And so the uh, but when you go, the the their butcher shop is closed. Um, Okay. And you go to the door and knock. And after some minutes, um, the door opens. Um. It is uh, uh, one of one of Frida's brothers, um, and who you recognize by sight but not by name. And he looks you up and down and says, uh, "You know, we're we're not interested," and closes the door. And I, I, um, I think I, I think I, I use my my old reporter's trick of the foot in the door, mm-hmm, and then I mm-hmm. just kind of wince, kind of wince at the slam, and I say. <laughs> You don't have time? You don't have time for Bertha Holbrook's son? You're not interested in, in a visit from the son of a family friend? <laughs> uh, he says, uh, no, we're not interested in a visit from anyone. Now get your foot out of the door, I'll chop it off. I think I'm going to use my edge here. Okay. Love it. Something is being, something is being hidden from me. <laughs> cool. And I don't want to suss it out. All right. So using an edge, even... With the goal of finding out information mm-hmm. is always a role. Yeah. Uh, uh, exertion, as we call it. Um, so I'm going to go through the... Uh, there's kind of an A to Z process of putting together your dice and then seeing what your die pool is going to be. Um, okay. Obviously, as you, you know, if you, you play for over the course of a session, you kind of internalize this and it doesn't take this... Uh, kind of ritualistic going through, but I like sure. to make sure we pace it out, especially yeah. for our listeners. Yeah, yeah, for sure, of course. Um, okay, so you're using your edge. Uh, you, um, you're going to assemble a pool of black and red D6s, uh, okay. or any other two kinds of dice that you can uh, uh, differentiate between. Sure. Um, you will start with your black dice. Uh, do you have a quality that applies to this situation? Um, I think I, I would probably argue, uh, I would argue my, you know, I've used my relationship with my mother. So I'm going to mm-hmm. argue that is, that is, that is my, you know, leveraging that sort leveraging that relationship is, I think, yeah, uh, for sure. the quality that I would, I would, I would apply here. Cool. So, uh, technically the, the things there's, there's qualities and then there's relationships. These mm-hmm. work kind oh. of the same way. Uh, but yes, as a term of art, do you have any, uh, I feel like at least one of your qualities also applies. Uh, I definitely have. Uh, I have a great deal of pride. You have a great deal like of pride. I, I am being uh, a little bit insulted. Oh right yeah, now for sure. A little bit turned away. Cool. So uh, you. So technically, <clears throat> so technically, technically, you are risking these on this roll. The, okay. the rating that they have uh, could go down. Okay. Um. So that is what the the why you might choose not to use a particular okay. thing or why you might want to, uh, if you have like more of a negative quality, right. If it goes all the way down and is X off your character, that means that, you know, yeah, you, you no that longer are mourning or whatever. Um, yeah. So you'll risk pride, uh, mm-hmm. your relationship with your mother, which I think totally makes sense. Yep. Does your greatest strength apply here? Um, I don't think so. You're not being particularly commiserate. No, I think I'm being a little bit... You're, uh, you're being more pushy. <laughs> I think I'm being a little more pushy. Cool. Uh, so you have two black dice. Mm-hmm. Um, your edge, obviously, is what you're using. Um, yep. So you get a red die for that. And then does your perversity apply? 
Uh, I think my perversity does apply here. Mm-hmm. I think I know something is being hidden, and I am, I am trying to uh, draw it out of them a little bit painfully. Great. So you get a red die for that. Okay. Um, you, uh, you also you start the game with uh, one weirding die. Mm-hmm. Now, if there's multiple protagonists, what you do with weirding dice is you uh, speak in the voice of someone else's imp. Uh, to mm-hmm. try and, and motivate them to act in a certain way and offer them the weirding die. And if they accept it, it goes into their pool. For single protagonist games, um, you can spend that on yourself and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we'll, we'll kind of escalate fictionally uh, how your imp is coming out a little bit more. So sure. it is a it is up to you whether you want to spend your weirding die. Um, you will get more as anxiety rises. Got it. I think I want to hold on to the weirding die for now. Yeah, I, I think it's probably uh, not super important here. Cool. Uh, so you have a pool of four dice, two black and two red. Yes, indeed. You're going to roll them. You're looking for fours or better because your lucidity is four. All right. I got uh, my black dice. I got a three and a five. And my red dice, I got a three and a one. So I got one uh, four or greater. All right. That is a great role. So uh, for me, not necessarily for you. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So you have one hit or one success. Yes. You spend that on either getting the thing you want, uh, in this case, getting into the house, right? Mm-hmm. Um, finding out what they're trying to keep hidden. Um, uh, you spend and you also spend a hit on each thing you risked. So since you risked uh, your pride and the relationship with your mother, uh, if you do not spend a hit on either of those, those will both go down. Mm-hmm. Now, you also rolled two threes, correct? Yes. Okay. So what that means is uh, in this moment, you have the option to embrace the imp. The imp will bring you power. It wants you to, uh, to, to push harder in this situation, uh, find out more, right? That mm-hmm. will mean that you drop your lucidity to three mm-hmm. and recount your hits based on the same roll, which in this case would then give you three hits because you have two threes plus that five. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that will enable you to get what you want and keep both of your things from dropping. Yeah. Uh, at the price of a little bit of your humanity. Yep. I think uh, what happens is, you know, I start to move my I start to move my my foot away and I kind of lean in and I'm like, what's the what's the problem? Are you feeling under the weather a little bit? <laughs> a little hot under the collar? Um, and uh, you're so you're using your edge, right? Yeah. Um, so the, the 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 smell coming from from him um spikes from kind of a low level uh uh kind of just garbagey like mm-hmm. you know i just don't want to talk to you in particular i don't have a real like secret or anything like that um spikes when you say uh um you said like uh are you sick or something something mm-hmm. along those lines you said the word yeah. sick right yeah yeah so on the word sick uh that that spikes to just this like sinus cavity filling um stench uh as uh he, he steps backwards and kind of stammers he's like no, no no there's no one no one's sick here no one's sick in this house and that is obviously a complete yeah and total lie um but the uh what does it look like that your your imp comes out into the world a little bit in this moment mm-hmm. uh what does that look like um i think what it looks like is um that that smell mm-hmm that uh that scent like uh starts to i think i think the air starts to like wobble a little bit like it's like it's a burst of heat Mm -hmm. and it kind of floats around me like and in that 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 scent and that heat starts to like float around me and it just distorts the air a little bit as it kind of wafts wafts and and radiates around me and converges on me (laughs) cool and it just kind of hovers there and warbles and wobbles and then dissipates right so the uh 
you know, this, this, this brother can't see that. Right. But yep. he basically the, the surrounding area that it fills for, for those of us, you know, from the, uh, uh, omniscient perspective can see that's, what's pushing him away from you. Yeah. As I mentioned, um, so a little bit of histor uh, Philadelphia history that I, I, I came to realize as an emergent detail, if, if we are butchers living in row houses in Philadelphia, we are almost certainly in what will become the Italian market. Okay. So sort of on Ninth Street there, you know, so what is what what, what the visuals around us are like, uh, it's not fully formed yet, but eventually there will be like stands upon stands all lining the street with people selling fruit and meat and <laughs> cheeses and all kinds of stuff, which I think adds a little bit of like horrific detail if you think about like. People, if you think about the scent of fruit and mm. meat in the just floating in the air, wafting, and then there's this sudden like just around me and only kind of perceptible to me, there's this wafting acrid mm. sulfur smell mm -hmm. that like is physically forming around me and congealing around me, and then dissipates just as he kind of backs up and you know I I think I I think I step inside mm. and I you know I I revel in it for a moment and I I, I wait half a beat too long yeah he's just like looking at you and kind of backing away even further into a corner to to so that he's not physically in your way to like it's just an open doorway uh and in farther into the next like half of the house and I, I i i wait a beat too long before like dropping my posture a little bit and saying i was referred here by a friend i should have specified that a physician's assistant there's Something in the air, something going around, and mm. I have reason to believe that it might be here as well. I, I'm I'm sorry, I was distracted by the job a little bit. Do you mind if I <laughs> take a look? Uh, and he says, uh, "Well, if 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 Master Morweather sent you, why didn't you just say so?" I it completely slipped my mind. I I. I got back. I got back to the old neighborhood and popped back into the old me. It won't happen again. I assure you. Um, and you only I can notice the imperceptible grin on my face right. as I say. Um, so uh, the to 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 wrap up that role because you embraced the imp. Anxiety rises, so mm -hmm. it is now at two. So you get another weirding die. All right, and. Uh, Ratiocination now costs two points instead. Perfect. Um, you also, uh, you make a red check. Um, so you have two circles at the bottom of your sheet in ontogenesis. Yes. And this is tracking kind of your long-term development towards or away your, the imp. Yep. Uh, so when, so when I say hey, make a red check or a black check, that just means put a check mark or a hash mark or whatever in sure. the red or black circle. Um, so make a red check because you embrace okay. the imp. Um, and uh, I believe if I if I recall correctly, you ended up with more red than black hits because the threes yeah. were both red or something. Yes. Yeah. So make another red check. All right. That is the that is the the mechanical fallout from that roll. OK. And so, yeah, I want to get what I want. I want to, I want to know what's being hidden here. Right. So, yeah, uh, he's uh, definitely hiding that there's someone sick. Um, and you can kind of tell from the, uh, once he's out of the way, you're getting more kind of uh, tendrils of scent wafting from that doorway. Um and so there's something being uh, maybe not l particularly lied about, but um, there's definitely some kind of uh, treacherous or dishonest scent in the air uh, coming from a source that is farther in the house. Um, I'm going to spend my two points of reason. Could I spend from multiple pools? Uh, you cannot spend from multiple pools. Okay. Um, and also in this like situation, so you don't need to find you don't need to spend points for every single thing you want to okay. find out. We kind of follow what you want to do. Oh, gotcha, until gotcha, gotcha. We hit a point where like you cannot kind of naturally by the context of the scene. Gotcha. Okay. Get to the next then, thing. Yeah. Then yeah, I'm just gonna I think follow that scent, mm -hmm. follow my nose, yeah. and you know. Um, 
kind of look around and start kind of muttering to myself, mm -hmm. what kind of secrets could a butcher's family possibly hold? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to like go up to the door and give it a knock. But as I'm knocking, I'm already starting to go for that handle. Right. Yeah. So there's only one more room that has a door. Um, you know, this is basically just like a, a rectangle that's, you know, bisected by a couple walls and yeah. different spaces. You actually have to go up a little staircase and there's like a top mm -hmm. floor, for lack of a better term, which is just one uh, one room. Yeah. Um, and that has a door. So uh, as you kind of poke your head through the house, it's not very large. Uh, as you poke your head through each room, uh, this brother kind of follows you but keeps out of your way. Uh, definitely far enough as if, you know, you still had that uh, 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 scent umbra around you. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, when you knock, knock on the um, uh, you knock on the door and you hear a, a woman's voice uh, go, uh, Ev Evan, is the doctor back? And, you know, that's when you just open it, right? Mm hmm. Uh, so you open this door and there's, yeah. uh, even though it is, so it's like late afternoon, right? This yeah. isn't, you know, it's not like, uh, darkness or anything, but the, the one window is shut and, um, has a curtain over it and there are, uh, candles in the corners of the room. Yep. Uh, lying on a narrow bed is a... a a young woman that you recognize as Frida. Um, she is uh, very small, very like, she's just a petite person, but mm -hmm. you can tell even from across the room that her face is kind of like drawn um, in the manner which you have seen many, many times uh, of, of consumption, right? Mm -hmm. She has a, she has a wasting, a wasting sickness. Uh, sitting on a stool next to her is, uh, her mother who, you know, you recognize. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, she's the one who called out. And so she turns and sees you and, uh, and, and is surprised. Uh, Arnold, what are you, what are you doing here? Business. Um, I wish I could say it was personal. Um, James Moreweather sent me, uh, apparently... News. Apparently, uh, it was not quite a job for a physician, so they sent a journalist. <laughs> Doctors, am I right? She shakes her head and and says, uh, "Oh, uh, James. James has been so. Uh, he's he's been so kind." Uh, and then she gets a look on her face that's kind of like that's a little more um, closed off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not like not like that other doctor. And when she says that, Frida opens her eyes and just kind of speaking to the ceiling. She doesn't even move her head to see who came in. Says, uh, don't don't say that about the doctor, mother. He's he's doing the best he can. I feel a lot better, really. Other doctor. I, I, I wasn't aware that there was another doctor. I James hadn't mentioned another doctor. Oh, well, you... Uh, you know how you, you, you young men are. You're always trying to uh, go for the glory yourselves. But yes, uh, both he and uh, the, the, she kind of like rolls her eyes a little bit. And that other, that doctor, Dr. Wilder, they've both been in here. And I have Dr. to say, they haven't, I don't think that they're taking, taking my poor Frida's, uh, I don't think that they're taking my poor Frida's condition seriously. Dr. Wilder, I, what, how, how long has, how long has he been, how long has he been, has he been, you know, seeing Frida? How long is, how long has he been here? What, what's, please, please uh, help me understand. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm being a little bit of a journalist, but you know, uh, if I like, tell me, I want to, I want to hear more of your, I want to hear more of your problems. I want to <laughs> know what you're struggling with. Okay. Um, Doctors, am I right? <laughs> cool. So yeah, uh, she, she is happy to complain about this doctor and you know, you're doing journalist things. And so there's no, like it is, it is not in, like it is, it is in keeping right. That, uh, she'll kind of tell you a bunch of stuff, uh, which is to say you don't need to make a role or anything. Yeah. Basically when things, uh, the, the directive in this game is that when 
when things are in accordance with are in accordance with how th- characters and situations have been established, we mm-hmm. don't need to roll for that stuff. Um, sure. It's when you're trying to break out of, uh, you know, the, the normal flow of things. Yeah. Um, cool. So she, uh, she starts kind of complaining about this doctor. Uh, Frida started, she was feeling unwell uh, two weeks ago. Um, and you kind of get from, you know, a couple smart questions uh, to, to figure out this timeline. And she basically got sick the same day that uh, Percival was sick. So like two weeks ago, let's say. Okay. Um, and she says that, uh, um, you know, she she put out, she didn't know any doctors and she put out the word uh, that, you know, her daughter was sick. Um, and that uh, the first... The first doctor who came to see her wanted to, you know, wanted to cut her open like a pig. And I couldn't allow that. Um, bleeding. Of course not. You've seen, you've seen what they do to pigs. Right. Yeah. We, there's, there's, there's no sense in treating, <laughs> there's no sense in treating people like those, like those animals. I mean, we treat them right, but they're animals. Of course. They're animals. They have a, they have a, they have a purpose in the, in the, mm-hmm. in this life. Kretz gets good commiseration. Is what yeah, that, is. that sure is. Um, and she's getting more comfortable as she talks to you, right? Yeah. Because you're like responding and being uh, gracious and listening to her, even as you're getting this information, uh, playing into your uh, uh, commiseration. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, she wouldn't. She wouldn't let the normal doctor, you know, bleed, do any bleeding, which is pretty standard medical practice right. at this time. Uh, so someone. Uh, so so then, uh, Doctor Wilder just came by the house and he said that his, he said that his, his methods were non-invasive and, and, you know, would, would drive out the, would drive out the sickness, um, that's in, that's in her lungs and her heart. And I don't know if she's, and I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. Um, and as she's saying that she just doesn't know, Mm -hmm. um, have you been, kind of across the room and like taking notes or are you like close and I think I'm I think I'm next to her taking notes I think I I think I found a spot to sit you know it's in more of the more of that commiseration I'm like next to her I have my notepad out Mm -hmm. and I'm scribbling down names I'm scribbling down Dr. Wilder underneath that I've written like James question mark and I'm just (laughs) but I'm next to her like listening and actively responding all right cool so uh as she's talking um you're starting to uh you're starting to notice kind of like a, like a, a, a spicy kind of um, almost peppery smell, almost like from some kind of uh, food preparation, maybe. And you've just been kind of like, you know, someone next door is roasting something, right? Something yeah. like that. Um, as she's saying that this, uh, that Dr. Wilder, he's, I don't know what he's, if what he's been doing is, has been helping my daughter, um, she opens her eyes again and says that, uh, no, I feel, I, I told you, I feel much better. I think I just need a couple more treatments. Um, the smell kind of intensifies and you see, you can see in your field of vision, both of their faces and Mm -hmm. both of their faces get a little redder and a little more, um, drawn like both hers and her mother's, uh, almost as if, while her while while her daughter is defending this this doctor um that has uh that is drawing some kind of mm-hmm. uh something out of them and i um i sit there for a second and i i see this and i i straighten up and i'm like i what time is oh my <laughs> goodness i absolutely I, d- I hate to impose, but do you have anything that I might, you know, grab a quick snack, maybe some jerky? Just get me on my way. I, I think I have enough. I have some some things to follow up on. I but I, I really should not be out and about hmm. on this empty a stomach. Uh, so the mother has been standing up while she's been delivering this diatribe. She kind of slumps back down onto the stool she's sitting on with her head, with her hand to her forehead and uh she she just goes like, oh oh, talk to, t- talk to my talk to my son downstairs. Oh, I maybe I've been 
maybe I maybe I've been over uh, overdoing it a little bit. I feel faint. I you know what it sounds like to me is maybe you have an empty stomach. Why don't we go down and have a snack together? You want to get her to leave her. I want to get her to leave. I want to get her to leave the room. Her daughter's before bedside I, before I go off to confront this Doctor Wilder. Ah, well, she she's not going to leave her ill daughter's bedside. Not while she's in distress. I think I'm going to make a roll yep. for this. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's see. Uh, I have. Uh, I have. I'm going to say I, I will. I will wager my. Uh, I will wager my pride on this mm-hmm. and, and, and be very kind of insistent and very kind of, you know, be like, no, no, I, I insist. I think that we should. I think that, you know, you're, you're not doing yourself or, or your daughter any favors by staying up here. Right. So I will wager my pride here. I will also wager. I will also again wager uh, my my relationship with my mother. Yeah, I will sure. again wager that and say. And say, listen, you know, I am the son of a butcher. Like, I, I recognize, I recognize a hungry face mm-hmm. when I see one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I will also, um, I will also say, I think I can definitely use my my commiseration here and be like, you know, you you're stressed. You are you are in a bat. You're not in in a great place. You know, a full belly will put things into perspective. And before you know it, like, I will. Be back here with good news from the doctor with, you know, treat, news mm-hmm. that will brighten all of our spirits. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, I I buy all of those. Uh, and yeah, and this also could, you know, through through potentially like offending this family that could impact your relationship with your mother, too. Right. Like, yeah, it kind yeah, of yeah. works. Uh, makes sense to me. Um, yeah. Are you using your edge? Uh, I am not using my edge here. Is your perversity relevant? I don't think it is. Yeah. Yeah, not so much. You're not really trying to use some kind of knowledge you have or or get them to con- admit something or anything like yeah. that. Cool. Um, so what So what happens if I'm invoking my greatest strength? Is it treated like any other uh, dice in the pool? Yeah, it just gives you one black die. Perfect. All right, so that is three black dice, no red dice. All right, do you want to spend any weirding dice on yourself? Sounds I like... will spend one. Okay. I'll, I'll spend a weirding dice on myself. Cool. Um, so as your, uh, so, you know, in this case, I will speak in the voice of, of your imp, yep. unless you had something. No, in mind. no, please. As you are you know, guiding her, uh, hopefully to get her kind of like up off the stool and to come with you um, to like guide her to the door. Right. Because you want her to leave and leave you alone with yeah. her, with the daughter. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but you're, you know, kind of like physically like guiding her to the door uh, to encourage her to go downstairs. And you can just smell her. Um, you can just smell her, her, her fear for her mm-hmm. daughter and the pain that watching her waste away like this is uh, causing her. And your, uh, your imp is. Just like, uh, she's, she's an old, she's an old woman. She, she doesn't need to see all this, uh, see all this pain. She could just go down these stairs. No one would ever know. And then what a story that would be. Mm. Mother and daughter in one, one juicy obituary. Tempting though that is, I write. I write the stories. I don't make them. You're going to reject. Re- I am rejecting. I am rejecting my imp here. Okay. Uh, fine. Um, accepting the die doesn't mean you do it. It just means right. you accept the. It means I've accepted. I've heard. I've heard the voice. Mm-hmm. I, I've heard. I've felt the impulse. Right. Uh, but you are rejecting this impulse. Yes. Cool. So make a black check for All rejecting right. a weirding die. All right. Uh. But go ahead and take another red die into your pool because mm-hmm. I am spending a weirding die on this, which is an indication that this has some direct bearing on the monster. Okay. Um, in a multi-protagonist uh, game, when the editor spends weirding dice, it just turns black dice red mm-hmm. instead of adding a die. In a single protagonist game, it does give you the die. Okay. So you have three, three black and one red. A three black and a red. And you are looking for threes because your lucidity is now three. Okay. 
Uh, well, that's great because I got a uh, six, three, three, and one. So I got my I got three successes, which means that I will get what I want. Right. I will get her to come with me. I will, uh, and I will keep two of my. I will not harm two of my three, uh, three things that I have wagered here. Do I get Correct. to choose them, or do you? You get to choose them, and there is a wrinkle here because you uh, risked a relationship. Okay. If you want to, and it is appropriate to to the circumstance, uh, what is the nature of your relationship with your mother? Is it? Uh, it is obligation. Obligation. So. If it makes sense, I'm not sure if it does, but you can tell me if you think it does. Instead of spending hit on it, you can change that from uh, obligation to sympathy, and that will keep it from dropping. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do exactly that, so I will keep all three of my... Cause here, and here's why I'm going to justify it mm-hmm. as, as doing that. I think this is... Um, I think this will get back to her. Oh, you yeah. Know, I think this is not an immediate thing, but I think this will get back to her that, like... I am taking I am I am taking a role in the community Mm -hmm. and like and it is something of like, oh, he's not just it's 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 that I I see my mother. I see my mother in her and also my mother sees me doing this. So I think it is sort of a a mutual thing of us going, oh, oh, you 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 care and want to be involved. You're not checking in just because you want to check in. You definitely. Yeah. You actually give a shit about. I don't know if I can curse. Um, no, you can curse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you actually give a shit about like where you came from. Yeah. And like, you know, so that I, word gets around like. Y- oh, yeah. Yeah. That makes. I, I know. Th- I know the neighborhood. Cool. Yeah. That makes sense. And that's also very sweet. Yeah. Um, that's a nice little note. <laughs> so yeah, I will keep that. I will switch that to sympathy, which means I will keep my pride and my uh, commiseration as is. Correct. And I will get and I will also most importantly get what I want. I sort of I, 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 I sort of half shuffle her because I'm, I'm wagering the pride. So right. I kind of have I give her sort of the shoulder push. I'm like, no, no, eat, eat. You're not going you're not going hungry right. on my watch. And she kind of leans on your arm as you guide mm-hmm. her towards the door like she's accepted. Yeah. You know that the uh, that what you're saying is is what's best for her. Yeah. And, you know, she's maybe she, she even mumbles something like. I can't remember the last time I ate, you know, because she's been up here I, this whole time. Of course, you're 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 stressed. Yeah. I understand. But Beca- so we go down, we eat. I get her out of the room, and then I would like to meet, like you know, segue away from that. Right. We have our we have our we have our nice meal. I I depart because I have de- I have a date. I have a meeting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to spend two points of standing right now. Okay, cool. So just to uh, wrap up from that role, yeah. Uh, Make a uh, black check because you got more black, black than red successes. Yep. Um, and I will just uh, uh, point this out for the listening audience. So because you did not roll any twos, you did not yep. have the option in that moment of embracing the imp, even if you wanted mm. to. You can only do that if it would give you more hits. Okay. I like that. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. So sometimes makes as... It- Makes it so you're not you're not encouraged to be, for lack of a better term, edge lordy. Right. It makes it so that you 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 have to feel that temptation to really go after. Yeah, it that. has to actually help you, and also yeah. it means that uh, you actually get fewer and fewer opportunities to do it as you go oh, down. That's, yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't even consider mm-hmm. that. Game design. Um, Game design. <laughs> Cool. So uh, what are you up to? You're spending two points of standing. I'm spending two points of standing uh, as our anxiety is two. Mm-hmm. I need to know where to find Dr. Wilder. And I know the person oh, to yeah. I know the person to speak to with this. Mm-hmm. I think that like the visual, I think what happens is we get another, you know, knock on the door visual. But this time it is pounding. And it is actually uh, James's very nice colonial home mm. as like a physician's assistant. Mm-hmm. Or actually, I don't know. Is he living in sort of a nicer home or is he because you said he sort of hopped around jobs? Like what is what does his home he, look like? Yeah. So he uh, lives. He boards with uh, like a, a family that keeps a room for boarders mm-hmm. um, in not in your neighborhood, but in, you know, a uh an upwardly mobile, I suppose yeah. we would say. So this is like a, a separate, uh, this is a standalone brick kind of cottage with, uh, that he boards at. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, to go find him there, you actually like go and talk to, uh, this is, you're going directly. So it's like evening now. 
Yeah, I, I am. I am crashing at. I am crashing whatever he's doing to basically be like, where is Wild? Right. So, and that's what we what we what we're seeing. Yeah. Here. So they're actually eating dinner, and he eats dinner with the family. Um, so you know, when you knock on the door, uh, the uh, a a, a, a middle aged man um opens it, uh, and he clearly he's not wearing his hat. Uh, his uh jacket's un unbuttoned. Um. It's clearly, you know, mid, uh, mid meal. He's actually, he's still holding, uh, he's still holding a knife, not, mm -hmm. not threateningly, but it has like a chunk of meat on it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he, he opens the door and it's like, uh, you know, for, for the last time we already gave to the, we already gave to the collection. You don't need I... to come around every night. Uh, can I speak to James for just a moment? Oh, you want you want to talk to James? You know where? Yes, yes, yes. I, you know where he's right? I know, but it's it's a family thing. It is he is you know <laughs> we are as close as, as as close as can be, and it is <laughs> it is a family emergency. Okay, he's like fine. Uh, oh, James, uh, you, yeah, he just goes like James, get out here and get this get this guy away from my door. And yeah, sure enough, he yeah he 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 comes. Uh, at as called and uh, just stands in the doorway to talk to you. And I think without even before, even before like introductions, I'm just like Wilder. Where do I find him? And he frowns and says, why do you want to talk to Dr. Wilder? I need to speak to the doctor. Where do I find him? Uh, and James shrugs and says, uh, you know, come to think of it. I don't think he's ever told me where he lives. Can I call you? Can I call in a favor, James? Uh, depends on what it is. I would love a uh, part of this. It's a it's biz. You know, story. Uh, I'm writing the story. I I need you. It's not a want. It's a need. I the, I'm not going to be able to finish this story. The story of Percival and the story of Frida and everything else until I speak to the doctor. So wherever, you know, whenever you're, you're going to see him next, I need to be there. So his eyebrows kind of raise. And when you say Frida, uh, and, uh, strokes, strokes his chin. Yeah. And says that, well, uh, we were supposed to make a call on, we're supposed to make a call on Frida after, um, after supper tonight, actually. Wonderful. I need to accompany you. Fin I can't finish your <laughs> yeah, finish like, your meal. Like, I I mean I can't invite you in. You understand. But of if course. you wait, you know, wait at the you know wait wait at wait at the 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 you know the fatted goose, um, and I'll come. I'll collect you before before we go on our rounds. Send give. Give everyone my regards, <laughs> and I, 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 I go and I sit quietly at the fatted goose, and I have, I have a beer, like a, a beer that mm -hmm. I, I don't really even touch sure. until James gets there, mm -hmm. and then I throw it back. <laughs> yeah. So you know, historical detail. Uh, so yeah, you'd probably, you'd have like either some kind of like super super dark beer or a mm -hmm. cider if you're yeah. more of a. a have a lighter taste uh, or just straight up whiskey. Okay. I think, I think I'm, I think it's a cider mm -hmm. at this point. I think, I, I think I have a cider. You sound like a cider man to me. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a cider man. Oh. So I think this, I think I've got this cider that I just like toss back cool. and like, it's like sour and sweet. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm. Mm. <sighs> let's go. So good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, while you're sitting there, there's, you know, you, you, there's like people, you know, who like want to, play cards and mm -hmm. want to find out like all the hot gossip and all this kind of stuff. And like some competitors, right. Who like look at you from the other table and try to figure out what you're up to. Uh, but you uncharacteristically, I would imagine, uh, yeah. you know, kind of keep your keep, focus. Yep. I, I'm usually a little bit of a gossip, you know, it's commiseration. It's loving the job, but today <laughs> it's nothing today. It is James shows up, I throw back the drink, I wince, and I, I'm already out the door. Nice. Because uh, we were on our way to this house call. All right, yeah. So he I, he's good as his word. He collects you. Uh, you head back to uh, the the uh, the kosher butchers. Um, it is uncommonly late. 
right? Like you mm-hmm. wouldn't expect um, calls of any kind that are not of an emergency nature uh, right. at this hour. Um, there are, uh, as you go, you actually are kind of racing the, not intentionally, but it just turns out that like the, the men who walk around to light the gas lights that are on the major, yep. uh, the major thoroughfares, you're kind of like with pace with them. So it's like the lights kind of go on with you as you're going through, uh, the colonial area era, mm-hmm. uh, part of town, the richer part. Um, and then as you get into your neighborhood, uh, those are replaced with, uh, some just lanterns and then just light coming out of, um, people's, uh, windows. Um, you get to, uh, the Lipkowitzes, um, mm-hmm. uh, James Knox, uh, he appears to be expected the same brother who, uh, opened the door earlier, opens it and sees him and just quietly, just like silently, you know, moves to let him pass. And then just glares, glares daggers, but like a little bit of fear at you as you walk in behind him, like just as he's about to close the door. And I give him, I give him like a quiet nod of almost like it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, go upstairs and James is in front of you. Uh, and he, he just opens the, or the door is, uh, uh, ajar, not totally open, mm-hmm. but just like standing a little ajar. Uh, Dr. Wilder, uh, this, uh, this this reporter wanted to see you and you step behind him and you uh that kind of spicy cooking smell that you had smelled yep. earlier slams back into your nostrils uh like you walked into the the oven that like a roasted spit yeah. was turning on um and this this elderly um man is uh uh, is kind of is, is hunched over Frida. You see him from the back. You can see his white hair and kind of the hunch in his back and the wrinkles in his uh, in his arms. He has his, his shirt sleeves pushed up, and he's holding some kind of uh, some kind of fabric hose, and it's mm-hmm. going down to a small. Um, like basically a small like a cauldron mm-hmm. uh, and then it's it's capped over it like to contain whatever's in there and you can see uh, a haze issuing from this hose as he's running it up and down uh, Frida's body and her skin is getting just a little bit redder as he and as he does so I step out from behind James and I just start speaking and um, I just start muttering Doc, um, Dr. Wy- Wilder. Wilder, isn't it? Uh, listen, I... Obviously, I- I'm curious about your methods. I'd love to learn more, but also there's this... And I look over to James, and I look to, uh, Frida's mother, who... Is Frida's mother there? Uh, she is not. She... Okay, then I... Yeah. If it's just me, James, and Frida, mm-hmm. then I look to James, and I just start talking. And I say, Doctor, I have this condition that I think you might be able to help me with. You see... I, lately, my nose has been acting up when someone is doing something they shouldn't be doing. <laughs> Sometimes I, I, I smell things and it smells wrong but enticing and it smells different when someone is hiding something or someone is acting impurely and Doc, I got. I, I think it's getting worse because sometimes I hear this voice that says, <laughs> "Do it, do it, do your worst. It's gonna feel really, really good." And there are days when I, James, I don't know if you want to be hearing this. You might want to leave. <laughs> yeah, and James is just looking at you with this look of like, not horror, but just like surprise, right? Like of all the possible situations, this is not what he had in mind for what was going to happen. <laughs> um, and, uh, this whole time you've been saying this and, uh, Dr. Wilder has, uh, other than moving the, the, the hose, um, he's been kind of like nodding. You've been seeing the back of his head move as he's like nodding, but he hasn't turned around or anything. Uh, and I, 
I come up to him, like, my arm is just around his, my arm is, like, closing in, my shadow has fallen over mm-hmm. him, and my arm is starting to, like, move to envelop his, like, my arm is moving to envelop his neck in a headlock, because <laughs> I'm like, I hear this voice, and it tells me, and every time I hear the voice, the smells get stronger, Doc. Uh, all right, so as you're moving uh, closer to him, he takes a step back, like, to get, you know, away from where you would be able to get your arm around Mm -hmm. him as he does so you're already moving your arm and just the very tip of your elbow kind of clips his shoulder and Mm -hmm. you don't feel a thing like it just like there's nothing there at all and then he looks over your shoulder and says uh master morweather perhaps you should leave me and this young man alone i feel that my treatments may may be able to help him Yes, I, I I think that would be best, James, because I think you I think you understand my affliction better than just about anybody, <laughs> don't you, Doctor? Um, all right, anxiety goes up by one, and I think I'm gonna try and knock this man out of a window. <laughs> all right, so I think, I think I think this is the part where I actively try to kill the monster. Okay, uh, how? Uh... Once he says for James to leave, do you wait for him to leave or are you going to assume that he leaves? I, I think I wait for I think I lock eyes with him and say the words, James. I say again, James, mm-hmm. I think you don't want to be here for this. Mm. Um, and I think like I think he can see like I think he knows me well enough to be able to see the genuine concern in my eyes. Yeah, for sure. So he takes one step towards the door and then uh crosses his arms and says that uh and and says i'm i'm here to learn from the doctor anything that he that he can anything that he says to you that's something that i should know right doc right doctor and uh he's looking at wilder with this look of like this like almost puppyish look like like wanting the approval wanting the um acknowledgement uh, from this uh, older, more experienced man, and I, I sit for I, I sit for a second and I say, James, you want to learn. You want to learn. You're going to learn more than you possibly could imagine <laughs> in this moment. And that's when I kind of just turn back and I just throw like throw the haymaker try to grab the collar Mm -hmm. you know grab grab the collars grab through him around him whatever and just try to like i'm trying to get him out like throw him out of a window awesome to to his demise all right so you uh throw yourself at him and it's uh you you almost throw yourself out the window because Mm -hmm. where you're expecting to impact you know a body you just stumble right through this uh this apparition and uh you know you catch yourself you know the the window still has this like curtain over it so yep. you know who knows if it's even open or closed but you catch yourself on the sill and uh over your shoulder um you can see that he's uh just shaking his head uh and saying that uh a most curious case indeed the this seems to be an affliction of the mind, not of the body. And for the afflictions of the mind, and for the afflictions of the mind, I can do nothing. And as he's saying this, he's um, uh, holding the hose near Frida's face. And you can see that it's not, um, that the steam that's issuing from it is not mm-hmm. coming from the end of the hose anymore. It's actually coming from his fingers and going into her nostrils. And she's getting more and and more red and uh, starting to almost shimmer. And he, you haven't, you know, you, it was a blink and you mm-hmm. are at the window and you turn and you see and he looks younger. His The lines on his face have smoothed and his hair has gone from gray to salt and pepper. So... What do I do? All right. So uh, if there's um, so your options mechanically, um, Mm -hmm. you know, we have we have now fictionally established that there's not a corporeal body here. Yeah. Um, So if you want to do, you know, something else 
uh, you know, we can go to an exertion role. Um, yep. You can also spend uh, your point of empathy to ask me a question about this monster. And uh, any question at all, though, generally, you know, how do I kill the monster or how do I connect with it or whatever, whatever you whatever you need to know to move forward. Yeah. Um, and I will answer it. And that will be a true answer, whether it is from my prep or whether it is something that I've decided just now or through the course of the game is the appropriate thing. All right. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I think I need to ask you how I kill this monster. I need to know how to <laughs> how to beat this thing. Cool. Uh, what about you? Uh, so this is spending empathy. What mm-hmm. about you? resonates with this creature it's clearly this is clearly a spirit of some kind um Mm -hmm. clearly is you know doing something to drain life for its own for its own purposes Um, i think what it is is as it's draining right i think the air around it starts to warp Mm -hmm. and starts to congeal and that peppery scent is filling my nostrils and as it's filling, as as that peppery scent is filling my nostrils, I think for a brief moment, even if it has no corporeal body, that sulfuric garbage rotten egg scent fills its nostrils. And for a moment, we're both surrounded by that congealing, warping air, and we stand there for a moment just looking at each other, both knowing that, like, we are both of, we are both the same. We are both mm, you're- merely trying to indulge in the scent you are you are both uh you are both cursed if you will yeah cool all right and so your question is how do i how do i destroy this thing how do i kill it okay um so as your eyes lock with his as the scent kind of um intensifies around the two of you and you see his nostrils flare as if he's drawing in a deep breath as well and then you see just a little spark of horror in the in its in its eyes just just a little bit but you realize that this creature doesn't know that it's dead it thinks that it's just doing its uh doing its best to uh to to stave off death and so it is uh when it takes the the it was taking the life from this from this girl uh, that's maintaining its own its own existence. So uh, perhaps, or perhaps, uh, you you are you are the path before you is to uh, make it acknowledge that it is dead, and then it will no longer have power in the uh, in the corporeal world. And so I, I, I look at it for a long time and then I crack a smile that like that kind of shit eating <laughs> grin that I think James has seen a lot. Uh-huh. And I look at James and I say, James, you've always been a little uncomfortable with my job. I understand. It's a weird job. Honestly, I've been a little uncomfortable with some of your jobs. It's our relationship. The thing is, you do my job for long enough. It starts... It, you numb yourself to it. You, you you start to realize that the dead are the dead and there's nothing you or they or anyone else can do to change it. Sometimes it's old age. Sometimes it's consumption. A lot of times it's consumption. A lot of times it's a lot of things. And I just start reading the, I start saying every cause of death I can think. Mm, of. I saw you've seen somebody was mangled. Somebody was mangled in a carriage accident. You know, obviously, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. war victims, war, you know, bullet wounds, gangrene, all of these things. And you know what? Sure enough, it's just it's that one thing. And, and everybody's got it. Everybody's got a story. And I look back at the monster and everybody's got a cause of death. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, let's do a roll. All right. So I am going to wager my literature. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely wagering my pride. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm definitely wagering my relationship with Brian mm-hmm. because yeah. obviously this is, you know, <laughs> this... James is here and this is going to get back to Brian. Right. I am some kind of a monster. <laughs> um, and I, I I think I am. I think I'm using my greatest strength and my perversity. I, here. I think so. I think this covers both. I think 
I think I'm I'm trying to connect with this thing and say, like, tell me, like, mm-hmm. tell me how you died. You know, open it up to me. I've seen it. No matter what your story is, I've seen it. Mm-hmm. And so I try to tell him and then I try to like and so I'm trying. But I'm also trying to, you know, show that power and show I am in control here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I know I something you don't my diversity here as well. Uh, is your are you using and your I think, edge? I think I think so. I think I'm using that weird. I think I'm using my edge and my weird dice. I think that the imp is like <laughs> all the, dice. the imp is like yeah. It's just it's it's all in on this. The imp is mm-hmm. like the imp is in my ear, being like, being like you know. Well, it's just it's it's say that you know this is a, uh, of you know of all the scoops, you know the the tale you know the tale of I, the doctor from beyond the grave. I think even more than that, because I think I, I, yeah, I think it's telling me like, yeah, the doctor mm-hmm. from beyond the grave and you're going to be the one you're going to be, you're going to be the front page you're going to be the doctor. You're, you're going to be the one that killed. You're going to be the front page. And also no one will ever believe James about what happens here. Yep. And you will be able to use that to help you with Brian for the rest of your life. You'll be able to lord this over James. Mm hmm. Yeah. Cool. So you'll uh, accept this one. Yeah. Uh, you can only do one at a time. So, okay. Uh, you spend one on yourself and go ahead and take another one as this is okay. directly dealing with the monster. So you get a, a uh, one of my weirding dice. Yep. And uh, yeah, you're looking for threes. So, so what's your is, pool? Uh, that is four black and four red. Yeah, I think you're going to be fine. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a six, three, five, four, four, three, wow. six, six. Wow. Uh, so I don't have to, I don't have so, to acknowledge the imp. So those are all successes. All hits. On all eight dice, right? Yeah. And it's four and so, four. Yep. So you choose whether you make a, uh, or, so technically it's, if one of them has like more sixes than the other or whatever, but since I, I'm not looking at them. Uh, go ahead and choose whether you make a red or a black check based on how you are kind of resolving this. Uh, I'm going to make the red check I and say that so. this is just me. This is just me. Ta- or the black check. Sorry. I'm going to make the black check oh. and say this is just me doing my job and being and okay. being the best me that I can be as I like mm-hmm. as I find I'm just talking and I'm like, finally, I'm just like, so how did it happen, Doc? Mm. Was it old age? Was it consumption? sit and I, I pull out the chair um, and I'm finally like my posture is down I'm like sit mm-hmm. so, let's let's write your obituary awesome so as you're reeling out this litany of 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 horrors of all these ways you've seen people you know that the, the aftermath or actually seen people die right the uh the the steam that was entering uh into Frida's nostrils kind of exudes back out into uh the doctor and uh he starts to look a little older again and she starts to breathe more naturally james takes a step back and he's just fascinated right he's just like yep totally you know compelled by what's going on in front of him but he steps back to give you room you pull out the chair and uh the doctor looks at it and he looks at you and uh, when you uh, pull out pull out your pad, right, and say, let's write your obituary, uh, he looks down at himself, and all of you can see that he's growing more misty, as if, you know, steam himself. Um, and he sits uh, as, he, as he fades and looks at you and just says... I, I couldn't find, I know there's a, I know there's a secret. I know there's something, there's something that will stop death from coming. And I thought I could find it. And I thought I did find it, but, but nothing can stop this. And he, everybody dies, my friend. Yeah. And with that, he gets, uh, the even more kind of, uh, uh, cadaverous look of, you know, one who has reached the end of their natural life, mm-hmm. uh, and then just fades away into steam before your very eyes. And I sit for a moment, and 
I, I sit in silence and I finally just look up and I look at Frida who is, you know, resting and I look over to James and I, I, I offer the same chair and I'm like, James, we should talk. <laughs> and I think that and, is where we, where we end. And cut. Yeah. That's, uh, that's that was brilliant. great. That was great. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that ruled. Good job. That was great. That was awesome. Um, how many uh, checks did you end up with? I had, uh, let me find out. I had, I believe, seven, uh, two red and three black. Okay. So, you know, if we were to play another chapter, we would see uh, how you are moving towards or away from the imp based on your actions over the course of this chapter. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and roll three. You said three black and two red? Three black and two red. So roll three black dice and sum them, and two red dice, and sum them, and see That's, which is higher. Uh, 13 black, 10 red. All right, so that means that you gain a point of lucidity as okay. you have been acting more human overall, on average, uh, and you've been, and I think this bears out how mm -hmm. you played your character, you know, you, you have been making an effort to, uh, you know, not, not act towards your worst impulses. Yeah. So that means your lucidity goes back up to four. And next time we played, you would have four, you know, at the beginning instead of uh, yeah. instead of three. Um, if you get to six, then you reject the imp entirely and rejoin normal, rejoin normal society. If you reach one, you give in to the imp entirely and turn into a monster. And then I would love it. I would come hunt you next time. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, and then the, the the other like experience thing is you spend your checks for stuff. So uh, you'd spend your black checks to refill your ration of sanation pools because you spent mm -hmm. stuff out of that, uh, and potentially to gain to to uh, uh, refill your stats if they fell but did not zero out, um, and potentially to make new ones or raise the ratings in what you have, and to ra and to re recover or raise your empathy. Um, yep. you spend your red ones, you, uh, spend one more than the number of edges you have. So in this case, you could spend both of them to gain a new edge. Uh, mm -hmm. so you gain, and this is a uh, free form dependent on how things have gone over the course of this game and how you see your character developing, uh, what new cool, you know, cool, what new creepy power they have. Uh, you also spend red checks to establish facts about the shroud. So oh, neat. we start off the game with this very kind of general sense of there is a shroud there's stuff on one side of it and the other uh and then as we play by spending those red checks is when we start to really build our gothic world um mm -hmm. and establish you know more stuff that gives us more context for like new monsters and how your edges work and your relationship with the imp that's fantastic um, that's awesome so yeah so there is so we have a so the game is episodic in the sense that we just played a chapter but then there is some kind there are changes as you uh play out multiple chapters with the same characters cool that's fantastic i love it awesome um and, and so that that's the game that's the game Sorry. uh can i give a quick uh so for those of for for uh <laughs> for everyone who's not you who listened to me making yep. the monster um i just wanted to call out uh how my prep linked into this session is that okay yeah yeah for a minute uh which is that uh so as um, uh, so as you heard, whenever anxiety went up, that was a trigger for me to escalate on, uh, the three tracks that I had him prepped. So, okay. uh, what I, um, anxiety went up twice. So I did two escalations. Um, one was from those who were in his active care up to anyone who can smell his treatments. So that's when, um, we had the scene with uh, the mother in the, you know, with, with Frida and uh, uh, smelling the peppery smell and all that stuff. And both of them getting more drawn. That was representing that escalation because they both could smell his treatment. Um, and then I also escalated. It didn't really come into the narration because we were going pretty hard towards towards wrapping up. But uh, 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 those around it, uh, they're 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 blood and fluid starting to boil away, which is where Frida would have gone if, mm. um, 
if you hadn't, uh, uh, you know, done what you did to to yeah. resolve the situation, that's what have would have started happening to her next. Her her fluids okay. would have started boiling out of her body to escalate this to get you to you know, and then you would, yeah, you know, be even more motivated. I imagine to figure yeah. out the solution. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. So those so uh, when you when you hear how I did the prep, then uh, you'll hear. Then I will know. Yeah. Then you'll know. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was a delight. Yeah. Real quick before we wrap up, where can people find you and your work online? So all of my stuff is at ndpdesign.com, including the, uh, what I imagine when this drops will still be the pre-order um, for the book. So the PDF is out for this game. Um, uh, all the links to all the sites you can get it are at ndpdesign.com. Um, and then I'm also producing the book, which is uh, a monster itself. Uh, it is a graphic novel size, cloth bound, color, hardcover with uh, all the stuff for the game and also this whole uh, historical primer for the period with, uh, you know, all the all the all the background for those who want to dive into the history. Uh, you also can play by just making characters and picking some stuff off of Wikipedia like that whole range is is. Um, Love it. But that book should be out this summer. Uh, I'm taking pre-orders until, you know, I know exactly when it will land. Uh, So, uh, and then it will go on general sale once I have books in hand. Uh, uh, You can also find me on Twitter and and Instagram at ND Paoletta. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was an absolute delight. And now I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take a future, me. Thanks, Fast Me. And thanks again to Nathan for coming onto the show. That game was a delight. I freaking loved it. Be sure to check the game out at www.ndpdesign.com and be sure to follow Nathan on Twitter at ndpaletta. Then follow us on Twitter at Party of One Pod. Like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash party of one podcast. Join our Discord community at bit.ly slash party of one discord. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a nice iTunes review, a social media shout out or a word of mouth recommendation to a friend. All of those things help us do bigger, better, and cooler things, such as live shows, such as the one that we're doing on July 20th at 5.30 p.m. at Tattooed Moms in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is going to be great, and I hope to see you there. Uh, You can also support the podcasting, game design, all of that kind of stuff I do in two ways. One, you can send, you can buy me a craft soda at coffee.com, that's ko-fi.com slash Jeff Stormer, or you can back me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Jeff Stormer. Either of those ways helps keep the lights on. It helps keep guests paid. It just, it helps everything run smoothly and I deeply appreciate it. Now, speaking of things that I make, have you checked out all my fantasy children? If you haven't, why not? I'm kidding. It's, it's fine. I understand you're busy, but you should though, because it's great. All my fantasy children is a character creation, storytelling and world building podcast powered by you. Every week, my best friend Aaron Catano Saez and I take a listener-submitted prompt and we spin it into an original fantasy character populating a shared universe one story at a time. New episodes drop every Friday at allmyfantasychildren.com. Party of One is produced and edited, as always, by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Megaran, featuring the D&D Sluggers. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates or about coming onto the show, you can reach me at partyofonepodcast at (sighs) gmail.com. And that's it for me. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody.